Hi, welcome to the video solution for Adexcel IEL Physics. This is Adexcel IEL Physics Unit 4, uh, January 2021, and the second video of this series. So let's uh, start. Question number 16 At the Kulham Center of uh, Fusion Energy, CCFE, experiments are carried out on plasmas. A plasma is an ionized gas which is an electrical conductor. The plasma at CCFE is contained in a donut shaped vessel known as tokamak. A current in the plasma is produced by steadily increasing a current in a coil passing through the hole at the center of the tokamak. So this is a tokamak which is um, a donut sh uh, shaped uh, vessel in which we have a plasma remember plasma is ionized highly ionized charged particle and we have a coil at the center and um, uh, the plasma in the tokamak acts as a single conducting loop around uh, the center coil explain how is steadily increasing the current in the center coil produce a current in the plasma so basically what are we doing here in this coil current is increased steadily from zero to some maximum value and during this interval additional current produced in the plasma and we need to explain why clearly it is all about electromagnetic induction that if uh, uh, flux of uh, a conductor is uh, changed then it causes an induced EMF. So what is happening here? When the cur uh, current in the coil is steadily increased, so around the um, coil we have a magnetic field. And this magnetic field along with the increasing current, this magnetic field also increases. And this magnetic field linked with the plasma. So when magnetic field is increasing or changing from zero to maximum, so we can say that the uh, magnetic field linked with the plasma is also uh, changing and then uh, the plasma is in the single conducting loop so we have a complete circuit that means current can uh, current sh must be be pr producing in the plasma so in short increasing current in the coil causing magnetic field to generate which is also increasing and this magnetic field linked with the plasma so magnetic field of the plasma is changing and it is already a complete loop so EMF is induced causing current produced in the plasma part B the plasma can be considered to be a cylinder of length 13.2 meter length and cross-sectional area 2.3 this is a show that the resistance of the plasma is about that need to find resistance question mark resistivity is given a straightforward easy question of resistivity and resistance you have studied in unit 2 so you need to find resistance in term of resistivity so resistance R is resistivity time length divided by area you just substitute the numbers so resistivity is 3.3 10 to the power minus 8 times length which is 13.2 so 13.2 not 1.3 so 13.2 divided by area which is through 2.3 already meter square once you solve this so resistivity you will find as uh, sorry not resistivity uh, the resistance will be 1.3 9 10 to the power minus 7 ohm 1.89 1.9 10 to the power minus 7 ohm 
part two in a particular experiment the current in the central coil is increased steadily from zero to maximum value in the time 25 second this is time uh, when the current in the central coil reaches its maximum the magnetic flux linkage with the plasma loop is 16.9 Weber this is flux delta phi or phi calculate the heating power produced in the plasma power so if you recall you have a time you have a flux so you can find uh, EMF induced EMF and this EMF is basically nothing but uh, the you know the potential or voltage so voltage divided by resistance square so power is basically V square over R resistance we have already found this is the resistance and we need voltage voltage potential difference or in this case EMF induced so EMF induced is called the voltage so first we find EMF so according to Faraday's law of induction EMF E is uh, a change in magnetic flux linkage delta phi divided by the time delta T so EMF is equal to delta phi is um, 16.9 flux linkage divided by time 25 seconds so EMF is 0.676 volt and then you can find power so power is equal to 0.676 squared over R 1.89 10 to the power minus seven so power or heating power p is equal to 2.42 into 10 to the power 6 watt or you can say 2.42 million watt megawatt this is the power Question number 17, a students carried out experiment on momentum using two table hockey pucks as shown. The pucks, such, uh, the, the pucks each contain a small fan so, that, so they glide across the table on a cushion of air. Uh, the mass of the puck can be varied by attaching a small masses. In each experiment, the student pushed one puck towards a stationary puck. In one experiment, the first puck reached a speed of 0 0.35 after being pushed for 0 0.28 seconds. Ca calculate using the idea of impulse, the average force. We need to find force uh, used to accelerate the first puck. Remember, the first puck is being pushed from rest to that speed. This is your final speed and initial speed will be zero. So you need to first find the impulse and then this impulse can be used to find the force. So impulse acting on that puck 1 e is equal to mass of the puck into change in speed V minus U. So M is uh, 0 0.11 because this is 110 gram need to you need to convert into kilogram divided by 1000. So answer will be 0. Point uh, 1 1 kilogram so 0 0.11 times 0 0.35 minus 0 so impulse will be 0 0.385 Newton second and force is impulse divided by time so 0 0.38 5 divided by time time is uh, 0 0.28 so force is 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.1375 or uh, you can round this off 0 0.14 Newton this is the force
In another experiment, the first puck was pushed towards the stationary puck with the speed of 0.41 meter second inverse. The path of the uh, pucks before and after the collisions are shown. The path are labeled puck 1 and puck 2. Calculate the speed of the puck 2 after collision. We have given some data, mass of the pucks 1, puck 2 and speed of the puck 1 after collision. So did you use, okay fine, this is part A, we need to find a speed of the second puck. So we have a uh, puck 1, mass is 110 and just write this is uh, initial velocity, we call it U1, puck 1 and this initial velocity is 0 0.41. And then we have a velocity V1 for puck 1, final velocity after collision and this velocity is 0 0.28. and then we need to find velocity of the puck 2 after collision v2 this is our main target the idea is we are going to use uh, law of conservation of momentum sum of the total momentum before collision is equal to sum of the total momentum after collision <coughs> i'm sorry uh, after collision but remember this is a two dimensional momentum so we need to take care of direction of the momentum so we are going to consider horizontal momentum and remember in horizontal momentum we have only initial horizontal momentum of puck 1 so we can say that m1 u1 this is the initial horizontal momentum no momentum of the second puck because it was a stationary so we don't have m2 u2 is equal to horizontal momentum of puck 1 horizontal momentum of puck 2 and remember horizontal momentum we use cos so this is the horizontal momentum direction which is the exact uh, you know uh, adjacent component along with 49 or 43 you can draw two arrow if you wish so if you draw two arrows something like this and one arrow shows uh, momentum horizontal momentum of puck 1 the other arrow horizontal momentum of puck 2 so this one will be uh, m1 v1 cos 49 and this one will be m2 v2 cos 43 and the total momentum is sum of these two so sum of momentum before collision is equal to sum of momentum after collision so m1 v1 cos 49 plus m2 v2 cos 43 and if you substitute number so m1 is 110 must be in kilogram divided by 1000 130 0 0.13 must be in kilogram so m1 is 0. Point, let me write here 0. 0.11 into u1 which is i have written 0. 0.41 is equal to m1 0 0.11 times v1 which is this 0 0.28 here 0 0.28 times cos of 49 plus m2 0 0.13 mass of the second puck v2 we need to find make it v2 cos of 43 now clearly if you uh, see mathematically you have only one unknown which is v2 and use your maths first you multiply these two and then multiply this term and this term after multiplication is sent to the other side so it will be subtracted and then you divide with 0 0.13 of cos 43 so your answer of v2 finally will be 0 0.264 or 0 0.26 ms minus 1 this is your velocity of the puck 2 second part deduce whether this was an in elastic collision or an inelastic collision meaning you need to find that this collision is elastic or inelastic so of course we just calculate 
total kinetic energy before collision and total kinetic energy after collision and we compare if the kinetic energies are same then collision is elastic otherwise inelastic so let's calculate kinetic energy before so kinetic energy before is let's uh, half of I'll do it I'll do here half of m1 u1 square that means half of 0 0.11 into 0 0.41 square so answer will be 9.25 10 to the power minus 3 joule this is the only kinetic energy because only puck one is moving this is the kinetic energy before now kinetic energy after so kinetic energy of the puck one after kinetic energy of the puck two we have found the speed of the puck two as well so now so some of the kinetic energy is half of m1 v1 square plus half of m2 v2 square that means half of 0 0.11 into v1 is 0 0.28 square plus half of 0 0.13 times new speed 0 0.26 v2 when you solve this you have kinetic energy of the particle as uh, 8.71 10 to the power minus 3 joule clearly uh, 8.71 into 10 to the power minus 3 is less than 9.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 so the collision kinetic energy are not the same so the collision is inelastic or you can say the collision is not elastic explain the assumption made uh, when applying the principle of conservation of momentum it is a typical uh, uh, assumption when we apply law of conservation of momentum and we say that there is no external force acting on the system the system is isolated uh, this is one mark reason but the question is saying it will give you two marks so of course you need to explain why do we assume that because this external force can produce additional forces additional impulse and this additional impulse uh, due to that additional forces uh, the total momentum after will not be the same as total momentum before so you can add uh, this statement at the end because of the second mark if this question is one mark so saying there is no external force on the system is sufficient in the early part of the 20th century experiments were carried out in which alpha particles were directed at thin sheet of metal a few alpha particles were deviated through a small angle and a very small portion were reflected back the diagram represents an alpha particle reflected back through 180 degree as it approaches the nucleus of a gold atom calculate the maximum acceleration a of the alpha particle as it reaches the point of mi minimum separation okay from the nucleus assume that the gold nucleus remains at rest so we have a speed of alpha particle we have mass of alpha particle we have atomic number of gold so the idea is if you need to find accel acceleration so we have given mass of alpha particle so acceleration is force divided by mass and uh, mass is given and this force is the electrostatic force between the two nuclei of same charge so this force F can be calculated with uh, K Q1 Q2 upon R square remember I am considering this is Q1 and the alpha particle charge is Q2 okay but again if you need to find force then you need to find the distance 
distance is unknown we do not have that distance that means we need to figure out that distance first and how do we do that uh we are going to use uh the concept of potential i will solve the all step but i am explaining how do we find r so first we are going to find uh, the energy because we know that uh this r can be found using the potential v is equal to k q by r this r we can find if we have a potential and this potential we can find using uh, e is equal to v upon uh now this v we can find um v is equal to e into q this q is a charge q to you so try to find the link we need to find acceleration we need force we are going to find force from this formula but we do not have r and this r can be found for using potential formula but we do not have potential but potential can be found by using this equation if we have energy and the charge and that's what we can do we can easily find energy because the speed of alpha particle is given and mass is given we can find energy and energy multiplied by the charge of the alpha particle gives us potential and this potential will gives us radius and then radius can be put here to find the force and force divided by the mass gives us acceleration i hope you under you know you understand the steps so let's find the kinetic energy so the kinetic energy of alpha, of alpha particle ek is equal to half m v square so half m mass of the alpha particle is 1.74 into 10 to the power 7 sorry this is not the mass this is the speed let me erase so that you don't confuse mass of the alpha particle sorry yes alpha particle mass of the alpha particle is 6.64 uh, so half of 6.64 10 to the power minus 27 half m v square so v square is 1.7 into 10 to the power 7 square you multiply all these so kinetic energy ek would be equal to 1.005 into 10 to the power minus 12 joule this is the kinetic energy now you have a kinetic energy you can find potential so potential is i guess i wrote uh, wrong formula for potential here because as per definition potential is uh yes energy per unit charge i'm sorry about that please make sure that you make your correction the potential is work done per unit charge so this is wrong formula now we have energy and we have charge of alpha particle we can find the potential so potential is energy uh divided by the charge so 1.005 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by charge and this is charge of alpha particle and alpha particle has a charge not given but but you know that alpha has a plus 2 charge so two times of electron charge 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and the voltage or the potential will be 3.14 into 10 to the power 6 volt this is the potential increase in potential of the alpha particle now we have a potential we can figure out a radius so v is equal to k q by r so k q by r is equal to 3.14 into 10 to the power 6 so you have a value of k in the data sheet so k is um, 
9 into 10, into 10 to the power 9 so if you make r as a subject so r would be equal to uh, k q by 3.14 into 10 to the power 6 use k and q remember this q will be uh, you know mm, this q this q is basically q1 in the potential formula the charge is the main charge creating field generating or giving potential so q1 now r is k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 given in the formula sheet or 8.89 times q1 charge of the gold uh, nucleus so gold nucleus the gold has uh, 79 atoms so the total charge will be 79 times 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 this is the charge divided by 3.14 into 10 to the power 6 so r is equal to uh, 3.62 10 to the power minus 14 meter and now you have a r so you can find force so f is equal to k q k q1 q2 so k q1 q2 by r square so you can do all the steps so k is uh, 9 into 10 to the power 9 into Q1 charge of the gold nucleus uh, 79 into 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 and the Q2 is the charge of the alpha particle 2 times 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by R square R we have found 3.62 into 10 to the power minus 14 square you solve this you have a force F acting 28.088 Newton so acceleration is F upon A 28.088 divided by mass of alpha particle because we are finding acceleration of alpha particle so mass of alpha, alpha particle 6.64 uh, into 10 to the power this is the mass given 6.64 into 10 to the power minus 27 so acceleration will be 4.2 into 10 to the power 7 27 ms minus 2 it's a quite lengthy question uh, I did this question in you know great detail you can uh, skip many uh, you know uh, steps if you are good in maths or if you okay by referencing formulas or some step the diagram represent the path of an alpha particle with the same initial speed as in a that is deflected through a small angle okay another alpha particle deflecting with a small angle explain whether the maximum acceleration would be the same as for the alpha particle reflected back through the 180 degree or it will be different okay so the idea is acceleration will depend upon of course force how much force is this and this force uh, will depend upon the electric field or electric potential gain V gained and this V depends upon the distance R V is inversely proportional to the R clearly uh, this uh, alpha particle in the given diagram this distance is not a minimum distance this is greater distance so R is greater compared to the first particle in part A that means this distance is uh, greater so potential gained by the alpha particle is less potential less force applied between 
the between these two is uh, less so acceleration will be less so you can explain all these relation in terms of a statement that's how you can rewrite uh, again as I say that this is not mandatory that you write exactly the same thing you can rephrase but include all the situation or all the reason question 19 in 1909 Robert Millikan carried out experiment to determine the magnitude of the charge on an electron. His experiments involved the motion of a small electrically charged droplets of oil between two charged metal plates. Some students carried out similar experiment in a school laboratory. The terminal velocity V of an oil droplet was measured as it fell a known distance. In air, when the plates were uncharged, Stokes law was then used to determine the radius R of the oil droplet. Upthrust was ignored. Show that the radius of the droplet is equal to that. Where eta is the viscosity and uh, rho is the density of the oil. So according to uh, you know and the terminal velocity condition because terminal velocity is measured. So we can say that the force is acting on the uh, it is falling down so falling down to weight acting down and drag acting upward but it is falling with terminal velocity that means d is equal to the weight and we have ignored up thrust so we don't need to include u or up thrust now d according to stokes law is 6 pi eta R V and this V is the terminal velocity uh, the velocity is equal to weight which is mg we cannot find m this m 6 pi eta R V this m can be replaced with density into volume into g remember this v is the volume on the right hand side the v on the left hand side is the velocity that's uh, that's why i made a slightly curve so we cannot cancel this v this is the volume and this is the velocity or speed so now you can um, moreover this volume because we have a droplet so we have a sphere so 6 pi eta r v is equal to density and the volume volume of the sphere 4 upon 3 pi r cube into g so you can cancel pi on both side you can cancel one radius so finally when you rearrange and when you make r square as a subject so here you will have r square left after cancelling so make, make r square as a subject so r square would be equal to 18 3 times 6 18 eta v velocity divided by uh, 4 rho g and then you can cancel this is 2 this is a 9 so r square is equal to 9 eta v divided by 2 rho g and take the square root so r is equal to 9 eta v upon 2 g under root this is your required expression again I did uh, all the steps in detail so those students who have you know a slightly weakness in mathematics so I hope that you can understand but you can skip some step at least two for a particular oil droplet the terminal velocity V was measured to be okay terminal velocity was measured to be 5.35 times the power minus 4 calculate the radius it's a straightforward question everything is given we have a formula R is equal to 9 eta 
v divided by 2 rho g so you can see it's not that difficult you just substitute direct number so 9 times eta is a viscosity 1.86 10 to the power minus uh, 5 into terminal velocity 5.35 10 to the power minus 4 divided by 2 into uh, density 904 times g 9.81 and do not forget taking root at the end so r would be equal to 2.25 10 to the power minus 6 meter this is the radius a potential difference was applied across the plates and adjust until a charged oil droplet was stationary between them this is a stationary oil drop here calculate the charge on the oil droplet Q need to find mass of the droplet is given potential difference between the plate given separation of the plates are given so we need to find the charge so we know that when the droplet is stationary so we have two forces acting weight acting down and electrical force F so this is the weight of the droplet and force so you can say that F is equal to W W is the weight of the droplet F is the electrostatic force balancing the weight and this electrostatic force can be rewritten as E into Q is equal to M into G so Q is equal to which is the charge Mg upon E this E can be found using given voltage and the distance so E is equal to V upon D potential gradient and V is 9910 divided by D which is in centimeter so must be in meter divided by 100 so 0 0.016 so E electric field will be 6 point mm, let me see uh, 6.19 into 10 to the power 5 Newton Coulomb inverse now we have E you can find Q so Q is equal to mg mass of the oil drop is 3.03 uh, 3 10 to the power minus 14 times G 9.81 divided by E 6.19 10 to the power 5 so Q would be equal to which is the charge 4.8 10 to the power minus 19 uh, Coulomb this is a charge part B the students repeated the experiment for a large number of oil droplets the graph shows the number of oil droplets with each measured charge okay so we have amount of charge on the x-axis and number of drop droplet with some charges we have on the y-axis uh, clearly we have some pattern here we have a peak values okay what's the question the teacher states that charge can only be transferred in integer multiple of this explain uh, the extent to which the students results support this statement now the idea of or the meaning of this statement the teacher statement is uh, the charge given to an any any oil drop is either e or 2e or 3e or 4e multiple of the fundamental charge which is 1.6 this is e remember electron charge so an elec uh, so an oil drop can have either charge equal to one electron or equal to two electron or three or four and something like that 
so we need to uh, you know uh, give reason or analyze the graph of uh, students that we see in a previous part and we compare that whether uh, it uh, supports the teacher's statement or not so this is the graph clearly you observe the amount of charge on these all these numbers so I'm just showing you this is 3.2 this is 3 so 1 and so each line is 0 0.2 that means this number this value is uh, 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so if you do 3.2 divided by 1.6 if you divide this charge with uh, 1.6 so you can do 3.2 charge on these many remember we have around 17 uh, oil drops or each dry drop each drop has 3.2 10 to the power minus 19 if you do 3.2 10 to the power minus 19 divided by 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 your answer will be 2 that means 17 drops have charge double of the electron similarly you can do for the second one so this is uh, 4 and uh, 4.2 4 6 or 8 so 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so if you do 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 so your answer will be 3 if you divide this with electron charge so answer will be 3 that means a 19 droplet has a charge uh, three times of the electron and then clearly if you see the number this will be four times and the five times and the six times so of course we have a pattern that maximum oil drops have a charge equal to or multiple of electron charge not equal to of course we do not have equal to the like like this we don't have any drop which has same charge as electron but we have a double or triple something like that uh, but we also have some other uh, oil drops which is you know is spreading around the peak and we can assume that if you compare the uh, numbers so we have very few oil drops which uh, do not have charge uh, equal to multiple of electron but we can assume that because of the less number so these uh, this might be due to some error during experiment we can have these numbers so if we do the experiment slightly more carefully so of course we can you know um, remove these or we can increase more uh, oil drop with the same pattern In 1909, Millikan concluded that the charge on electron was 1.59 to 10 to the power minus 19, whereas the accepted value of today is 1.602. This was because the value for the viscosity of air used by Millikan was incorrect. Deduce whether the value of the viscosity used by Millikan was, uh, was too large or too small. So what did he do? whether he used large value of viscosity or small value of viscosity so the idea is if you see the charge calculated by Millikan was a smaller less charge that means in order to balance the you know or, or make the oil drop stationary the Millikan has used uh, less electric field so the electric field used to hold or to to you know uh, yeah oil drop in the air is less so electric field e was less or small value com 
comparatively that means and and why why did he use because the purpose of electric field is to balance the weight so that sufficient electric force can be applied so that balance the weight that means if electric field is weak so we can assume that weight was less and weight is directly related to the size so radius uh, was a smaller less radius and um, less radius if you see r is equal to 9 eta v upon 2 rho g root so radius is uh, proportional to root eta if other are constant so our eta is eta which is viscosity proportional to r square if r is less eta will be less so that means uh malikan had used a, a very small value of eta that's why he got less amount of charge please try to see the link i hope you understand and uh, i will try to do uh, one more if i get time if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section have a nice time